<clears throat> okay. As always, just a friendly reminder, if we're not going to be uh, uh, asking questions or speaking, please remember to mute yourselves so that we can limit the background noise. Our afternoon session for today is time management. Uh, the first session for time management is critical for all IT individuals. I'm pretty sure Rolando can agree, not only AWS, but uh, help desk technicians need to know time management. It's critical for them to be able to figure out what exactly they should be doing. And as also, please make sure you're in Google Classroom. Inside Google Classroom, there is a handout for time management that we will be alluding to. Sorry, I forgot to say that at the beginning, but I want to make sure we're all there. So uh, any problems getting into the Neopod session and or finding the classroom work? See? Um, ba based on your decisions as uh, what you do with time is how you end up conquering situations, right? Uh, time management, uh, well, when it comes to time, time is not something you can buy or you can make. We often hear that, the buying and saving and making time, and in reality, that's, that's not true. None of those concepts really exist. You take advantage of time. That's the, the essence of things. You use it wisely. Um, it's, you always want to organize yourself, uh, both in your life, when it comes, even as, with something as simple as a hobby or the sports. Um, so you, you want to plan it right. You want to use it wisely. You do waste it. That's one thing that does happen. So be mindful of how you prioritize uh, your stuff, uh, starting with life, with your studies, at work. An employer is paying you for the time you spend at work. So mm -hmm. demonstrating your proper use of it is essential. It's how you progress at work, how you progress in, in everything, right? You fall asleep, you uh, leave things for later, you procrastinate, uh, things will not happen. Just a thought there, but we'll see more of it throughout uh, this, uh, this session. Right. All right. Uh, we're not going to be dividing right now in, in, into groups. We're going to be doing this to, uh, all together. I'm going to sh uh, show you a list. And basically, uh, as a list uh, is here, we're going to try to see if we could prioritize together. Uh, actually, there's three of us, right? So I'll, uh, I'll actually push me into one group. Uh, Rolando, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you in group two. And then uh, we have uh, still, I believe, one more person that can help group, group three. So uh, let me pause here. Here's the task that we have. We want to try to prioritize our work for the day and then as a team collaborate and see what and where. Obviously, you have an eight-hour day. Okay, so which one did your group do first? Anybody want to share out uh, what your group did first? Attending the meeting. Okay, Does everybody agree? Uh, attending the meeting sh should have been the first thing we, we did? Yes. Yes. Okay. Which one did you guys do the 13th? You mean the last one? There's only eight. You sure? Task 13? That's what I have here. There was no task 13? Okay, the last task. What was the last task you guys did in, in the handout? Or the, the slide, sorry. I mean, it only gave us eight. Correct. Uh, right. So what was the last eighth one? Eight. Mm -hmm. Eight was 
is it tell us documenting changes that you might want to suggest to your uppers next week or whatever it is? I don't remember it. Though. I don't have the slide up, so I can read it. Yeah, I can go back. Go back. Yeah, documenting suggested changes to a company procedure. That would probably be last, just because um, it's not a first priority for your day. You guys find it easy this this task over overall? Was it something simple to do, or do you think uh, that there might be some strategies that might be able to help us out in this? What do you guys think? Is it an easy thing that anybody can do without any type of proper or prior knowledge? Time management is is the one of the, the easiest thing that everyone should know how to do, or think maybe um, mm -hmm. like personally for me as a college student like I'm currently as well as this course I'm taking uh, the courses from Miami Dade as well uh, it's something that you really have to make a habit to time management because a lot of especially a lot of first year um, college students we have a hard time doing time management it's like a habit you have to put yourself in because it it's not something most people are, well, most people, especially those who haven't really had a career yet or anything, aren't used to. But as, I mean, as you get older and you're used to, I, I think that's when you have a time management plan. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to time manage myself. Yeah, it's not, it's not an easy task. Uh, there is uh, things that could hopefully help us. And by the end of this, we'll be able to define time management as a skill that is used to accomplish many tasks in limited time. And there's obviously three main components that help us in time management. That's called allocation, prioritization of tasks, and planning. We'll dig into that a little bit deeper as we go. We're going to be able to use those three management strategies needed to create a work schedule. We're going to be reviewing those as we go. So, as I stated, time management is the skill used to accomplish many tasks in limited time. Location is a must. Prioritization of tasks is the second. And then planning. Can somebody tell me what allocation means to them? Time allocation. Setting time assigning to something specific. Time, right? It's time. Allocating time, in other words, saying how much you believe, how long do I think that I'm going to do this? Now, the good thing and bad thing about allocation is that you could actually allocate your time that you believe truly takes you to do this. You have to be careful with those. If I believe... In the IT world, this is a, just a rule of thumb, especially in programming and what's called ag agile mythology uh, of uh, planning, these numbers you will need. And the numbers are as follows. You guys ready? You have a pencil. The number is one, two, three, five, eight. Can anybody guess what the next number by the numbers that I just gave you of one, two, three, five, eight, what would be next in that if we see some type of logical pattern? What number is in next? Seven. Should be 13. Okay, we got a vote for seven. We have a vote for 13. Isn't this the Pythagorean thing? Yes, yeah, so, well, not Pythagorean, but I forgot the name. Twelve. Of the twelve. It's gonna be twelve. It's gonna be twelve. Twelve. Ooh. Wow. Whoa, Jordan. What do you think of that one? All right. Uh, eight plus five <laughs> is what we're doing right now because we did one plus two was three. Two plus three was five. Three plus five is eight. Five plus eight, I believe, is thirteen. Yeah. Eight plus thirteen will give you twenty-one. Twenty-one plus thirteen gives you thirty-four. I could do this, but. I'll be showing off, and I think I forgot it in the rest of the numbers, too. 
the, 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 which way? The, the, uh, it doesn't matter at that point because when it gets bigger and bigger, you, you'll see what I'm doing. So now we 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 have if uh, another guy that's famous in doing this is in Star Trek. Uh, days seem uh, or hours seem like days, and days seem like months. And what he means by this is basically, if you believe that you're doing something, it's going to take you one hour. You got to believe that it's going to take you two hours on top of that. So you now you're at the level of three hours. If it was days, you are three days. Tell me why. Because usually you are planning, as we agree, right, of what you're going to do. You're going to actually execute, and then you're going to test. And what happens if you test and your test shows that you have failed? Where are you going? Going back to step two. Now, what you just gave them as an hour your hour is up and you have not committed the right time to the user. This is why we plan this way. It's not obviously to try to buff the numbers, is to make sure that whatever we have, we have enough allocated time before we prioritize our task or plan anything. Because if we don't have enough time, it's gotta, something's got to give, right? I'll have to most likely do it tomorrow or some other day. So we have to be realistic with ourselves. This is not to put cushion or try to do anything else. The cushion is in the formula. So if it takes me half an hour, most likely it's an hour and a half. Make sense? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't overcommit is, is what we want to do. We want to make sure that we allocate enough time for ourselves before we go and prioritize next our task and plan. That's very critical yeah. number one because when we go and cut ourselves short, we're gonna run out of time and we're gonna be begging every user and apologizing for every to every other user that we are late. Diego, let's go back one slide just to, to for me to say something real quick about allocation. Yeah. Allocation should also, also almost instinctively we should, when we allocate time, we have to assess how much time we have total, right? Mm -hmm. We cannot allocate what we do not have. So we need to do a quick assessment of what it is we're playing with, and then we allocate the pieces of it, right? So allocation is not just uh, as allocating time unconsciously. We have to be aware of what is a total of time that we have, mm -hmm. uh, and then allocate it accordingly. Exactly. And that's why we have to, when we, we have that, that was the reason why we try to use that formula to, to remind ourselves, have I la uh, allocated enough time for my planning, for my executing, and for my uh, confirming? Because you, you, sometimes we only allocate only the time that's in the middle, the, thing, the time that we think is going to take only to, to do, do the actual task. Thank you, Rolando. So when you hear the phrase time allocation, what do you think overall uh, it means to you from what we've said so far, Teresa? Actually, no, Teresa, you, oh. uh, DeAndre, sorry. You, you gave me your definition. DeAndre. I think it means to, to like give yourself enough time to plan and give enough Give yourself enough time to like actually do it and like fix the issue, and also give yourself enough time to test the issue. We'll test your solution to see if it works or not. Yeah. Which uh, of the tax, from what we uh, just saw earlier uh, in the previous activity, could be completed quickly? Which ones do you guys think that we can go back real quick to the task that we saw a minute ago? Which one of these do you guys believe we could have done pretty quickly? Meet the new employee. All right. Everyone agree? Yeah. Yeah, I think in our group we agreed that that shouldn't take more than maybe 15 to half an hour. Should it should be yeah. quick. Yeah, and, and he's going to be shadowing you for the rest of the day, right? Most likely? Yeah, well, but that would be tomorrow. Today, we oh, for tomorrow, yeah, yeah, that's what it was, yeah. So not, not until tomorrow, actually, 
Yes. Now, would I allocate that first? No. When should I allocate that? What do you think, Pablo? When when should I put that? Should I should that be prioritized first of my day to talk to this employee that will be shadowing for tomorrow? Mm, no, not necessarily. Maybe maybe like uh, somewhere in the middle, right before lunch or after lunch or even during lunch. Okay, good, good, good idea there. We, we would just all, obviously, we know it's not in a hurry, so we can obviously look at everything, and most likely that would probably be, like you said, one of the last things that I'm probably working on, depending on his availability too, right? So, prioritize, uh, sorry, prioritizing tasks means determining which tasks are most important and must be completed first. Does anybody have any prior knowledge of what four different types there is that we can categorize stuff before or prioritize tasks on? Anybody knows which four are available to you? No one's ever heard of four different ways? In, in our group, we were using high, medium, and low, but uh, I can't think of a fourth one. Well, usually the fourth one, as you can think of, uh, it, uh, it is usually not used, but I'll, I'll give you the definition as easy as A, B, C, D. A. Okay. It is urgent and important. You writing that down, guys? I'll define them exactly, but those are the two criterias for A, urgent and important. B, it is urgent and not important. C, it is unurgent and important. That's unurgent and important. And lastly is D, it's not important and it's not urgent. With these rules, when we look at tasks, what it means is this task is urgent, A, and it is important to me and to my job or stuff that I have to do directly impacts me, right? B, it is still urgent, but it's not important. It is not directly impacting me, but somebody's asking for help and or is escalating stuff to me or some type of criteria that's urgent. And it helps you determine there, obviously it's still urgent, but it's not directly important to you. See, if we can see there, now it's not urgent, but still it's important. It's directly impacting my job or task or something that I need to do. It's important directly with me. My supervisor, for instance, wanted to meet at eight o'clock in the morning. I think that would be not urgent, but it's something important that I gotta do daily, right? And lastly, not important and not urgent, exactly what it means. It's not urgent, it's not directly important to me, those are usually like invitations that you get for somebody's birthday party to go to the break room, uh, or there's a little pizza session going on. And, you know, those type of tasks fall into D because usually they're not urgent, they're not important to you. And uh, obviously, if it's not urgent and not important to you, it's not a ticket, right? Because if it was a ticket, it's important to you. It would already be in C. If it was an unurgent ticket, it's directly with you, a ticket, that's C there. Make sense? Any yes. questions or doubts on those four different ways of prioritizing tasks? All right. So when you hear the word planning in context of time management, what do you think it is? Lazaro, can you give me your idea of planning? 
My idea of planning is first know what the company is doing, if it's work related or personal, as in what's my original schedule, and then start allocating, okay, what's actually, uh, sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, all right, so uh, I would allocate the time down, and then I'll start planning what's important, what's not important, and start doing that as well. Okay, yeah. So how did your team, uh, Alexa, go about planning tasks during the group activity? How do you guys uh, go about it? Did you guys kind of use these uh, steps more or less, or did you guys just kind of Planning the task for the activity? Yeah. How did you guys go? Did you guys do those steps before or did you just guys go straight to the planning part? Um, well, we basically like kind of put ourselves in, that, in their shoes and we would kind of see how we would kind of plan the whole situation. Thank you. Well, overall, the definition uh, for purposes in this stage of overall it would be involving how and when uh, correct and uh, like you guys said Lazaro and uh, Alexa thank you it, it involves how and when not only for your sake but also the user right because we got to make sure they're available and that that we're not in interrupting them because it could be an accounting person in the last week and the first week of, of uh, closing Months closing, I can assure you, a lot of places you can't touch those computers. So we got to be able to to work around their schedule and plan accordingly to that schedule. Not only ours, but theirs. Right. Thank you. So let's go through this together now as a group. Now we played with it a little bit earlier. I'm pretty sure if it looks familiar to you guys. So from here, guys. Can somebody give me an idea of what we should be doing first? What's the first step I should do before I do anything right now? Team meeting. Team meeting. Uh, Team meeting. Out of the steps that we learn, what should I be doing first? Let me rephrase my question. Should I Finding be- the urgent issues. Should I be, let me rephrase this. Coming to work, be prepared for- Allocation. Coming to work. Yeah. Am I gonna allocate? Am I gonna prioritize? Oh. Or am I gonna plan? Prioritize. Allocate, prioritize, first, plan. prioritize or plan? From what I can see here, and what's the order that I should take? Oh, it's in that order, okay. One allocation. Allocation. So, so let's go over here. In our step, we should be allocating times. That's what we should be doing first. We shouldn't try to see what goes first, but we should be able to allocate time. So on the first one here, I see about half an hour. Do we agree? On the second one, how much time do we believe we have on this one, Christina? How, how long more or less do we might think that one might take? Anyone know um, one customer is? Let me rephrase that question before we continue. Anyone know what the tier one customer means? Uh, the so most important. <laughs> uh, he's basically, that's guy probably that's paying your bill. The highest earning. So he's very high and it says urgent. So from what we learned on our A, B, C, D, it seems to be urgent, right? But how long you think it may take you to get, take care of this uh, urgent issue. How much time should we allocate from what we learned? How much time should we allocate? Three hours. Right? Because we think maybe one, but in reality three. Because one, most likely to fix it. We got our planning and testing to make sure everything. So we want to give ourselves about three hours or two hours and a half more or less, right? So we could put three right now, but if we need to shorten a little bit, maybe we could shorten a little bit. But I would say at least two and a half hours to three, right? 
Make sense? Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what it is, but it seems to be a very, very important thing. Next is to attend training for a new issue in a plat uh, document, a platform. How long do you think that might take? Well, it says it takes an hour. This is scheduled to take place from four, three to four. It says it where? I'm sorry. In the handout? Yeah, it says attend training for a new issue documentation platform. This is scheduled to take place. No, that's, from three isn't to that in the uh, handout? Yeah, but that's, that, that's for, for, for later. We haven't gotten, I don't think we've gotten to that one yet. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be working in a minute, right? I'm mm -hmm. doing this right here. So. It gives, I think you're, you're looking at the answer already. Is that what you're looking? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This one is subjective between us. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. So let's kind of go a little bit quicker because we're kind of running out of time. As we can see, lunch is an hour, but we could go through these. Some of them are, are concrete uh, and straightforward. But from when we finish this overall, we should have a time lapse of what we, we suggest is there. So let's pretend now that we've gotten through that time frame for lack of, uh, lack of a better time. We have determined from earlier, I've heard everybody in agree that this should be of high priority first, right? Our team meeting, because it looks to be urgent and important. It's important. And why is it urgent? Because it's the first thing that my boss is asking me to do from the looks of it, right? Next guy here, we also agreed when we were looking that he's urgent and important. Is there anybody else there that looks urgent and important to me as an IT individual that we can spot? The answer phone calls, customer phone calls. Darn too, and I'm a help desk technician, so I know that's next in my little schedule of, of urgent and important. Do we see anything else that may be urgent and important before we go to the next level? So do we see anything that's urgent but not important? So it might have been... Senior engineers, I mean, learning a skill. A specific skill, yeah. That looks urgent and important to you? No, it's not urgent, but it is important. Okay. Everybody agree that looks like a B to them? Yeah. It's important. You want to be able to know, you want to know and continue to learn things. Okay, but Maybe not is it important, like impacting important, in other words? Because a training falls into, it's not, I don't, I, it, would, it would be something important, not important, right? Because I wear on B. So B means that it's still urgent, but it's not important to me. Is it urgent, mm -hmm. not important to me? I'm, I'm thinking that maybe some of the important issues from the tier one customers might be related to new technologies. So that might be just as important as uh, responding to the certain issues for that group. I understand, but, but where the title of B is urgent and not important, you guys keep on telling me that it's important to you. So you're contradicting where you want to put it on how you're saying it to me. That's what I'm trying okay. to say. If I put it as a B, it's not urgent, right? But, it, and it's, I'm sorry, it's urgent. In other words, I gotta do it's urgent, but not important. Yeah, so that's what you, but you guys are not telling me that. You're telling me something else. You're telling me that it's important to you, but it's no, not no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Urgent. It, it should be an A then. Yeah. It, is, well, okay, we could put it A for now if you guys like to label A. Not a problem. We'll, we'll go just to familiarizing ourselves with the, with the newer technology so we can respond better to other tasks that are also A's. Correct. I would agree with you guys in that aspect. We can continue leaving it there. Well, let's see if we have enough time for it uh, uh, when we finish planning our day. But we'll, we'll see the whole exercise. Next one, we have uh, 
So let's go through all the Bs. Which ones here, what else is uh, B? We already labeled all A's. Can anybody la la label any of B? It's not urgent, but it is, uh, I'm sorry, it's urgent, but it's not important to me. Now you guys got me all confused. Urgent and not important. Got to be done I'm, right, I'm now, thinking, right now, but it's not important to me. I'm thinking uh, the last one, document the documentation of the new procedures. Everybody agree? Um, the, I disagree because you have until next week. So, yeah, it, it's not urgent um, as of yet, and you can probably do a little bit of every schedule when you have a chance so it's not urgent but it is important you think it is it is important okay yeah i agree that sounds though. like c then right okay so we can say that yeah, yeah yeah i actually meant the c i have okay. written my notes back okay so uh can we find any bees so far nobody can find any bees i don't think i could find something that is urgent and not important to my job duties or to me directly on the list in here so far. C's, we've been able to find several C's. Can anybody tell me anything else that is now not urgent, but it is important to me in my job? Attending a training. Okay, attending a training sounds that it's not urgent, but it is important to me. Okay, Any, anything else? Well, reach out to the seniors. Be out to seniors, right? Doesn't sound like urgent, but it's important to me. Okay. Anything else? Um, did we say lunch? Um uh, yeah, would we would you consider that in what range though? Is it a C uh, urgent? I'm sorry, not urgent and important or Remember, important directly impacting work. I think that depends on the person if they consider that important or not. Like I consider it important, so you're you know refresh and able to perform more efficiently. So you would say then it's C, right? It's yes. not urgent, but it is important. Okay, agreed. Next one and last one here is a document. We already that one and that one. I believe you gave it a C. Everybody have those letters because you're going to need them, the A, Bs, and Cs. So if we actually did ourselves correctly, I have here that we should, in the morning, be meeting up with our supervisor at a level A. After that, around 8.30, I should be responding to my A criteria of Tier 1 customer. After that, I have still an A issue to take care of, which would be between 11. I know I'm going to lunch most likely between 12 or one o'clock, depending where it is. Uh, I will obviously verify with my boss, depending coverage for lunch. And then around two o'clock, continue doing my phone calls and or one o'clock, depending when I get back from lunch. In the afternoon, my C stuff comes along looks to have attend my training and B meet with the new employee would be somewhere at the end and uh, C since I don't really have enough time and there's nothing uh, really that I need to do right now right now reaching out to the seniors and documenting suggest uh which one was that? Reaching out to seniors to request resources on how to learn something new that I'm not familiar with could hold off for right now since uh, it doesn't seem to fit. Same thing with the documenting of suggested changes that could hold off uh, for today. So not overwhelm and throw too many things. Questions or doubts on that little exercise? And opened your eyes a little bit, right? All right, so should have a handouts time challenge. 
which I believe Teresa was alluding, alluding to a, a, a minute ago, no? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, go ahead with that little practice. Let's try to uh, look at that and see if we could do the same. I'll be now calling you guys into your uh, rooms. One second. Hey, we're going back here. So did we find it a little bit easier in your group, Jordan, after we uh, went back to this? It was a little bit more easier with the new, at least, way of prioritizing, allocating, and planning. A little bit. I feel like we could we could more clearly understand like where our priorities should have been rather than just trying to like see everything that was there and being like, oh, how do we make time for this? You know, like, figure out which ones need more time than others. Mm -hmm. So, um, Christina, uh, how did you determine which activity to spend the most time and which to leave? How do you guys come up with that? Uh, was it a little bit easier? Was it uh, con contradicting in, in times? Or was it uh, compared to the first, act, first time we tried to go through something similar to this, was it a little bit more easier in, in trying to allocate time? Or what was going to take the most and what was going to take the least? Uh, I would say it's, it was easier with uh, it stating like how, off, like how long she would have to do it for. That was probably like the easier part, mm -hmm. but I would say when it has um when she has like training already planned, it's harder to fit in what other stuff she can right? do before then. Yeah, because it kind of like hard coded, and those those are the things that we have to notice too. That uh some things are 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 what we call hard coded to us, where there's nothing we can do. It's set in stone. They told us that's when we gotta be there. From my understanding our meeting with the with the supervisor and the training was at a specific time that not only you but other people were going to be there so we had to appear right so that was uh, one of the things which uh, activities did your uh, did uh, team 3 anyone in team 3 postpone for the the other day which activities for anyone any of the teams can you tell me which activities you guys probably postponed for the other day? Um, I would say the one that says document suggestions to a company, because it would be next week, so it wouldn't be something we would have to do right away. Yeah, right? Anything else, maybe? That's about it, I think, maybe. I'm not sure if there was anything else. Maybe the um, reach out to the senior engineers to learn a specific technology. Yeah, that too, right? Yeah. All right. So when working in a group uh, where there were specific, sorry, where there were specific activities that you disagreed about that importance about time or dedicated that any of you guys uh, disagree anything or was it much easier to try to resolve this was it uh, at all for any of you groups there one two or three that you guys could share out where yeah you guys started disagreeing and say no no way this is this is only gonna take us half an hour somebody was saying three hours something ridiculous like that the only thing was figuring out the meeting with the uh, with the new employee just figuring out which where could you actually allocate 30 minutes and in, in terms of like oh you have your meeting then you got the tier one and you got your lunch and your other calls that you have to get to mm -hmm. so yeah um my group it was lunch where to put lunch either in the middle of the work or after the work before the meeting yeah, it could get difficult when to take lunch. Uh, one we know is got to be somewhere in the middle of our shift. So anywhere, uh, a lot of companies have what they call, uh, it's usually about an hour and a half, okay? And what this turns out to is uh, you, your time. 
it's uh, for eight hours of work, you have 15 hour break, as you can see that you're getting here, right? In the morning. Then you have your hour lunch, and then you have a 15 minute break in the afternoon. Obviously, depending on your, on your responsibilities or what your boss also you need to check with on what the lunch schedule is, they may actually mandate exactly what time you must take lunch. So yes, we know in some, we have some flexibility. Maybe we could take it anywhere between 11 and two o'clock. Uh, but in some cases it's mandated exactly at a specific time you need to take lunch because when you come back, somebody else is going to lunch. So we got to be careful with lunch. Uh, we can't skip it. Obviously, some of you even said it, uh, and it's clear. Not only uh, it's important for somebody else, but it's important for yourselves because you're going to burn yourselves out. If you don't take a lunch and just try to work and overwork yourself, it's not a good thing. But uh, I would say anywhere between that range uh, of the lunch hours of uh, 12 to 2, the late, uh, we're looking at 1 or 2, right? If you came in at 8, also, a lot of the rules are half an hour when you start, you can't take break any time before half an hour you start, right? In other words, from 8 to 8.30, you shouldn't take. So if you finish uh, uh, at lunchtime, the same thing, half an hour before Lunchtime, you shouldn't be taking any breaks. That, so if you're taking lunch at 12, you shouldn't be taking any breaks at 11.30, at 11.45. Just doesn't make sense. It's obvious you're trying to extend your lunch. Same thing coming back from lunch or leaving from work. All those uh, are company policies and procedures that are usually in place to, to avoid you trying to double dip and getting a whole hour and a half lunch. Your time is, is supposed to be split up in that way, 15 in the morning, an hour at lunch and 15 in the afternoon. Any similarities or differences between your group schedule and the one uh, that I'm about to say to you guys? So at 8 o'clock to 8.30, it was obvious from my understanding we should meet our supervisor. 8.30, 11 should have been the tier one calls, right, with customers or respond to their, their concerns. 11 to 1 should have been your uh, answering your phone calls, one to two lunch, two to three customer calls, three to four was hard coded at, at uh, training, four to four forty five ish should have been continue answering more calls, and lastly is meet with the new employee to uh, schedule the the look around or the shadowing for the next day. As we stated, and some of you you have stated, we should reach out to senior engineers or document suggested changes at a later time. Anything that anybody would like to share or say that they might have had different in reference to the list I just read out? Um, for my team, I have a little different. It's because we kind of thought that if we're having a team meeting, the new employee would most likely be there. So quickly talk to the employee for five to 10 minutes and then go into our assignment, especially since most companies open at nine o'clock. So I give us a little bit of window to just knock it out. This way we can focus on the main Part of the job okay so let's look at the meet with new employee would you prioritize that urgent important urgent not important uh not urgent important and not urgent not important a b c or d for me i'll say um not urgent but important so it's a c okay and should I do a C or an A first? An A. Okay. So that would help you determine that although, yes, you, he might have been in that meeting at that time, responding to the tier one customers should be my next thing that I should be jumping into because that's an A. Although I do see him there, we all agree he's in the same room with me. As for the planning methods and way we should do our, our job, though, or plan our, our days, uh, unfortunately, he is not an A, so he would have to wait. Make sense? Uh, I see your point, but I'm kind of like struggling with that. I, do, I, I, the time I, I, I agree with you. The guy is in the same room. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> 
that's not the, I definitely would, I, I, if it was me when I first started work, I, that would have been the first thing, or maybe right before lunch, buy the book. If we're using the Kobe Shimiru or whatever you want to call that from uh, Star Trek, unfortunately, he falls into the realm of a sea, so I can't touch him right now. Unless if I finish everything else, I can't touch him. What happens between that half hour if something happens and all of a sudden my supervisor receives a call because I believe that he could have waited until 9 o'clock and that tier one customer just lost a $100 million contract because I was not able to resolve that issue. You think that we would have that customer after that? We're saying it's a tier one customer, so he's paying buku bucks. There's a thing called SLA, which is service level agreement. Usually tier one customers or urgent customers like that, we have a one hour response time, 15 minutes to call them, contact them and plan and an hour of response time. Usually maybe even the furthest or longest we could take is four hours before it starts coming out of our pocket. So we need to be a realistic. Unfortunately, I understand. The gentleman is in the room with me. He is right there. Unfortunately, I have a tier one customer who is waiting for me right after this meeting. Does that kind of clarify the unfortunate events that are happening there? Yeah, uh, I understand mostly. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's difficult, and, and that's the way we unfortunately have to plan our events when it comes to work uh, and or what we would consider a C event in a b c or d trust me if we learn to allocate prioritize and then plan and use that priority to plan and the time allocated we will be able to get the right result but unfortunately as you stated c is where he's at and i have plenty of a's that we already categorized can you repeat your list again? A is, oh, my list? My list? Yeah, the schedule. First was to meet with the supervisor at 8 to 8.30. 8.30 more or less to 1 o'clock because we said that was going to take around three hours, we said before, for some other events. I'm not sure if it's said in yours, straightforward. So two and a half hours there until 11 o'clock, I'm going to be responding to tier one customers. Those are the guys that are paying the buku bucks for our support. Next one at 11 to 1 o'clock, I'm going to continue in my help desk answering customer phone calls. From 1 to 2 is lunch. Once again, your lunch could be maybe 12 to 1 and then continue to answering calls from 1 to 3. But either where, wherever you're putting your, your lunch, it's got to be somewhere in there. Bottom line, in, the, in that sandwich, Right before I go to lunch, I'm going to be answering calls. When I come back from lunch, I'm going to be answering calls until I go to the training that I must attend to at 3 o'clock. After that, I continue to answer calls until at the end of the day, right before I leave, I make sure uh, 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes before I meet up with the new employee and coordinate, obviously, for the next day to make sure that uh, we talk. As for reaching out to seniors or documenting uh, suggested changes, that can wait for right now. That does not have to be done for today. It doesn't fit. So hopefully by now we should be able to define time management identify the three important strategies of time management and use three management use these three management time management strategies needed to create the actual work so we need to be able to do that we need to be able to first allocate time to everything and then prioritize sometimes we try to prioritize and then give it too much time based on the priority but we first need to just look at how much time looking at that uh, one, three, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21 uh, kind of idea, 
of how we're, we're allocating our time based on total time, planning, and testing, right? May be careful not to give yourself too much time. Don't go over cushioning. The formula is there to help you to allocate the time, not to try to you go and uh, put too much time to something because it's not going to be beneficial for you or for your planning purposes. Questions or doubts? And of course, mm -hmm. no, no, no. No, I, I wanted to emphasize a little on that, uh, Diego. Yeah. Uh, we saw it in the context of, of a job, right, of work. But uh, that's something we can easily apply to life. Now we're not uh, mixing up uh, work and study or study and something else, right? That's probably the, the most we end up doing throughout the day. But when we have multiple things to do throughout the day, even uh, applying the technique to scheduling your lunch is important, right? Because you're not going to be able to to buy time anywhere. Your day, your 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 a weekday is made out of